First meeting of clergy of PUS province since COVID-19. The Diocese of Georgetown, Guyana hosted a meeting of the Association of Diocesan Priests, ADP, from the province of Port of Spain from August 26 to 29. This gathering, the first since the COVID-19 pandemic, brought together clergy from hosts Guyana, Trinidad and Tobago, and Suriname at the Catholic Life Center in Brickdam. The province of Port of Spain encompasses a diverse region, including the Archdiocese of Port of Spain, Trinidad and Tobago, and the Diocese of Bridgetown, Barbados, Georgetown, Guyana, Paramaribo, Suriname, and Willemstad, Curaçao. The annual meeting served as a vital platform for strengthening bonds, sharing experiences, and fostering leadership within the brotherhood of the priesthood. Throughout the four-day event, daily masses were celebrated at the historic Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception, providing a spiritual backdrop to the proceedings. The gathering's theme, echoing the words of a well-known hymn quoted by Bishop Francis Aline OSB, Georgetown in his closing homily emphasized unity and purpose, stand together for what you believe, work for what must be done. Who is a diocesan priest? A diocesan priest is a parish priest. Diocesan comes from the Greek word for housekeeper, and the Greek word for parish means living near. A diocesan priest is a priest who is involved in the daily life of the people. He lives near them in all things and helps the local bishop rule the house of God's family, either as an assistant pastor or as a parish priest, and sometimes in ministries such as teaching or serving as a student pastor, or a hospital, military base, or prison chaplain. A parish priest is responsible for all the ministries provided by the parish, and for the administration of the parish. The vast majority of priests around the world are diocesan priests. They are ordained to serve in a particular diocese or archdiocese. A diocesan priest is part of a presbyterium, equals council of priests which consists of priests from the same diocese slash archipelago, and therefore under the leadership of the same bishop, when they are ordained as deacons, usually about a year before being ordained as priests, they make a vow of fidelity to honor and obey the diocesan bishop and his successors. They also make a vow of fidelity to live in chastity and in accordance with their clerical status, including living simply. Technically speaking, Diocesan priests do not take vows and do not take a vow of poverty. They receive a modest salary from the parish or other Catholic institution they serve, since their accommodation and basic needs are met by the parish where they work. Their small salary is more than enough to cover their personal needs, such as clothing, vacation expenses, a car and charitable donations. In diaconal ordination, the bishop receives the profession of allegiance from deacons and priests and thereby incarnates them into the diocese. This confers certain rights on deacons and diocesan priests, such as the right to receive support from the diocesan church, and imposes on them the obligation to work for the diocesan church under the leadership of the bishop. This is a commitment of lifelong responsibility. Since most of the work of the diocese is carried out in parishes, a diocesan priest usually works in a parish. Diocesan priests are often also called civil or secular priests because their main work is pastoral, that is, helping people in the present world, Latin seculum, world, time. Diocesan priests and their mission. Pope John Paul II, in his encyclical Redemptoris, Missio said that, the mission of Christ the Redeemer, entrusted to the Church, is still very far from completion and is still in its early stages. CFRM 1. Therefore, he invited the active role of all Christians to be involved in missionary work. Almost all of the Church's proclamation is colored by missionary mission, especially in this day and age. 
So the word missionary is no longer foreign to those who are involved in proclamation. Even for children, Pontifical Society of Missionary Children. The term little missionary is known. Among diocesan priests, there is a term, missionaris fidei donum. The term missionaris fidei donum emerged when the encyclical fidei donum was issued by Pope Pius XII, April 21, 1957. The encyclical fidei donum was written before the Second Vatican Council. At that time, the view of a missionary was someone who was sent outside the country slash mission land. This encyclical contains an appeal to bishops worldwide to allow diocesan priests for a certain period to become missionaries in Africa. Because at that time, African countries had just been freed from colonialism, gained their independence. These priests were known as missionaries fidei donum. And until now, the term missionaries fidei donum is still used. Even for European countries, Italy, there is a commission to specifically handle missionaries fidei donum. However, in the era of the third millennium, almost all of the Pope's appeals slash letters direct all Christians, us, to become missionaries. Having a missionary spirit for everyone who has been baptized. Becoming a missionary by taking part in the missionary work of the church. However, for priests, they have their own specialties in their missionary duties. Especially in areas where Christians are a minority, priests are given special tasks, CFRM 67. However, every priest has the same task, namely to build the people of God. This is confirmed in the document. Pastoral Davo Vobis as follows. In reality, all priests, whether diocesan or religious, participate in the one priesthood of Christ, head and shepherd. They do one thing in common, building up the body of Christ, which requires various functions and new adaptations, especially today and is enriched from century to century with new charisms, PDV, 17, priests receive a missionary mission by virtue of the sacrament of holy orders that they receive. So in this sense, all priests are missionaries. The encyclical Redemptoris Missio, 67 explains this. As colleagues of the bishops, priests are called by virtue of the sacrament of holy orders to share in the concern for the mission of the church the spiritual gift, which priests receive in ordination, does not prepare them for a limited and narrow mission, but for a mission of salvation, which is very broad and universal, reaching to the ends of the earth, in the universal scope of the mission that Christ entrusted to the apostles. For this reason, the formation of future priests must be directed towards giving them a truly Catholic soul which accustoms them to go beyond the boundaries of their diocese, country, or right, and to assist the needs of the whole. Church with a heart ready to proclaim the gospel everywhere. CFRM 67, PVD 18, PO 20.
and gather intention intentionally. Does this sound familiar to us? The priest says. 